Good morning. My name is Dan Goldstein. I'm with the Prince William Office of Historic Preservation, and I'm here this morning to talk to you about October being Archaeology Month. Uh, archaeology is an important role that we have here in Prince William. We've done archaeology at most of our historic sites. Archaeology helps us gain more information about our historic sites, about the people that live there, about the events that occurred there. So it's a very important tool in a historian's box. Some of the things that you find in archaeology sites, animal bones, you might find buttons, you might find metallic items, cans, bottles, things of that nature. And they can help inform us about what's going on at that site in the present, in the near past, and in the really distant past, uh, going all the way back to some of the prehistoric times and the Native Americans that settled this area before the Europeans came to this area. Uh, before me, I have a collection of bottles that might be found at an archaeological site. Some of these items are newer, like this green bottle is a modern bottle, and some of these items are quite old, such as this medicine bottle that's probably from the early 1800s. How do we know this? How do we know these things, and how do we date these things when we find them at archaeological sites? It, with this material, with bottles, it's a little bit easier because of the way they were manufactured throughout the 18th, 19th, and early 20th centuries. For example, one of these bottles uh, has a misshapen top, and it has bottles through, or bu excuse me, bubbles throughout. And this is indicative of being a hand-blown bottle, so we know it comes from an earlier period. And sometimes, with the shape and the size of these, we can even tell when it was manufactured. A bottle like this one, that's probably from about the Civil War period, was made in a press or a mold, and we have two seams going down the bottle, so you know that two things clamped down with the glass inside to create this bottle. So that was manufactured, so we can kind of date that as well. But a handmade bottle, like this one that has no marks or no identifications is a little harder to identify. So you have to look at pieces of a broken bottle we may have found at a site, kind of date it, look at how uh, it was used and what uh, it may have been manufactured for. It gives us kind of a date as well. Pieces like these ink wells, they're a little harder to date as well because a lot of them are homemade, such as this one. It's just a clay bottle that was made by a potter. There are no marks, there are no identifications. So again, something like this might be a little harder, but we know the shape and the size is um, from something used in the mid 19th century, so we can kind of date it using that. A bottle like this ginger beer bottle, these were used throughout the 19th century for beer. They were manufactured over in Europe, so know they were imported uh, into the United States. Again, the style, the shape, even the color, the two different tones, uh, can give us an idea of when an item was manufactured and we can date it when we find it at a site. Unfortunately, a lot of times we are digging archaeological resources, these pieces are not whole. We're very fortunate because these are, were not broken, but a lot of times they're broken and that tries to tell us, well, this happened over on this part of the site, this happened over this part of the site, you find window glass in this site, you find glass like this that's more like a kitchen refuse. We can kind of plot and look at a site and figure out what happened on what part of that site based on what we're finding. Same thing with animal bones. If we find a lot of animal bones in one site, we might know that there a lot of but uh, butchery has been done at that site. That may be where the kitchen workyard is. So when we first start digging and we see these artifacts in the ground, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. We're trying to figure out what happened at that site at that time to give us an, over an idea of this overall history of the program of what we're looking for. Sometimes these sites are in the middle of a city, sometimes they're in the middle of the country, sometimes they're underneath other buildings. And so when you're repairing a building, you might come across some of these artifacts. So artifacts can be found throughout Prince William with so many decades of history here in the county. If you're walking down a path and you look down, you might see some glass, it might be from a 20th century bottle, it might be from a 21st century bottle, unfortunately somebody's littered, but it also might be something from the 19th and 18th century. So you have the opportunity to find lots of pieces of history as you're walking throughout the county. And that's one of the wonderful things about our county is that we have 18th, 19th, and 20th century history, and you can tell a lot from uh, archaeology and archaeological sources as you're going throughout the county. Now, we've done archaeology, as mentioned, a lot of our sites. Uh, and again, these sites uh, throughout the county you have uh, Brentsville, we've done some archaeology out there. We've had some archaeology here at Ripon Lodge. Uh, we've even had a little bit of archaeology at some of our battlefields. Talk about 
uh, where troops may have been camped, where uh, the cemeteries might be located, and again, when these buildings were built, when they disappeared, so there's a lot that can gleam from an archaeological dig. Uh, we don't have any archaeological digs currently going on in the county, but in next summer when field schools are happening, we might have a dig going on. So stay tuned to our Facebook channel and all of our social media, and uh, stay tuned for more videos about Archaeological Month in uh, October.